Hey y'all! In this video, I'm going to be attempting to do a kinky sewing for the first time ever. So I wanted to show you guys the bundles that I'm using and how it arrived to me. All the packaging and whatnot. So I'm not exactly sure what company I got this from, but they have everything on this package. So you'll be able to find it. Yeah, so. Oh, these is long, baby. Oh, these all 24. Wow. That's pretty long. I thought it would be shorter. It's fine though, because I'm gonna add layers, but yeah. Let me open one so y'all can really see what it's giving. Ooh, kinky straight indeed. I'm gonna have to wash and condition it because it does feel a little dry. But I do think it'll blend with my hair perfectly, as you can see. It's definitely kinky. Love that. So I'm going to take this wig off, wash my hair, blow it out, braid it down, put my net on, and then come back and we're going to get to sewing and installing and cutting layers and all of that stuff. I'm so excited. So see you guys in a minute or in a flash. Oh, jump scare. <laughs> anyway, hey you guys, I'm back. I wanted to do a voiceover so I can give you guys a more in detail walkthrough of what exactly I'm doing. So this is my braid pattern. This is the traditional side part sewing braid pattern. And then I added a net to it just because my braids were kind of big and it was a lot of gaps in between them and I needed like a clean base. You know, like if I just sewn the hair into my braids, it would be gaps in between the tracks like where my braids is so the net is very beneficial just because like it gives you something to sew onto besides your hair so yeah now i'm getting into sewing i'm just putting this thread through the needle and honestly it's not that complicated i was able to do this without a mirror like i've been doing hair for a while so i know how to do hair without a mirror like i could just use my sense of feel and feel around so what I'm basically doing is I'm sewing the tracks into my hair and then I'm going around the needle with the thread two times to create a knot then pull it through just so that my tracks are super secure and they're not falling out for the remainder of this install. And I'm just repeating that pattern throughout my whole head. It's really not as complicated as it may look, however, there are way easier alternatives to this, which would be just doing a quick weave. I consider doing a quick weave, but I don't know how to take a quick weave out and I'm not trying to damage my freshly grown hair. So I chose to sew it in just so that I could like oil my scalp and wash my hair. I feel like sewing maintenance is way easier than a quick weave maintenance. When it comes to quick weaves, you really can't do maintenance because you can't get it wet. So, yeah, I mean, it's really up to you. I just chose to do sewing for, like, my own reasons. So, I'm sewing. I'm sewing. I think this took me about, like, two hours to do, which is not bad at all. I feel like this is the same length of a wig install start to finish I will say though my arms were on fire because i literally washed my hair blow dried my hair braided my hair then sewed it in and that whole process took like three and a half hours in itself so that's three and a half hours that my hands were in this position working on my head and all i gotta say is your girl's got some muscle but anyway let's get back on topic so I didn't really show too much of the sewing process because I feel like it's quite simple. If I'm not doing a good job at breaking it down for you guys right now, please comment and I will like try to we'll try to get into more of a deeper explanation in the comments if you guys need. So yeah, I just fast forwarded a bit until I reached the top of my head. Once I reached the top of my head, it was a breeze. I didn't cut my tracks, I only started cutting the tracks once I got to like my side part because I didn't want it to be bulky I wanted it to be really flat but in the back of my head I double the tracks and I flip the tracks that just means instead of using one track I use two tracks and instead of cutting it at the end I just flipped it over and kept on stitching 
so yeah I didn't lose much hair and I feel like that saved me a lot of time as well when I when I reached the front of my head I did cut the tracks because like I mentioned I want it to be really flat But this process was really easy like i mentioned i was done sewing in like two hours so now i'm just cutting off the excess cap now it's time to get into this leave out now i haven't had a sewing since i was probably like 15 so and the last time i did i had a bad experience because i had straight hair and my leave out was not giving so i was really excited to try this because the whole point of this was that i got kinky hair to match my hair texture so i was really looking forward to this for a long time and i will say my leave out matched really well however my hair is really frizzy. That's like the only thing. The texture matches, but my hair is so frizzy that you can tell where my hair stops. So I had to like go in with the layers really heavy. How I actually styled the hair. So this is about two weeks after I actually installed the hair. So I just wanted to show you guys like a quick maintenance and how I do my hair every day and how I manage my leave out. You know, originally this was supposed to be a low maintenance hairstyle, but it turned out to be quite high maintenance just because the hair is really thick. So like you have to curl it or you have to straighten it and you can't half ass it being that it's so thick it just looks like a freaking afro so what i'm doing right now is just flat ironing my leave out because <laughs> i don't know i've like since i've installed this i've learned a few little tricks to like better hide my leave out so the next time i do a sewing i'll be trying those but i just didn't know my hair would be this frizzy and like originally the bundles were a little dry so I put a lot of like silk spray and like all this shit to make it silky but my hair is frizzy so like it was kind of hard to maintain my leave out on a day-to-day -day basis and I do feel like 
I got a lot of heat damage, but hey, I was good and that's all that matters. So um, I just flat ironed. So I just flat ironed my leave out, like the perimeter. And now I'm gonna do my edges because I like to do that first whilst my hair is back so I can really slick everything down to the gods, baby. You see that? I will say though, I love my natural hair. Like I'm definitely gonna get into more like half up, half downs and leave outs and like tapings and clippings, stuff like that. Cause nothing like, my natural hair complements my face so well. And sometimes when I wear wigs, I look like, kind of crazy and unusual in my pictures and I just love how my hairline and my baby hairs look when I have a leave out so I definitely will be wearing more of my natural hair After I laid my edges, I tied that down with an elastic band and now I'm just parting my hair into this very deep side part. Then I'm getting to hot combing because it's crucial for this install to be flat being that it's so thick. So yeah, I'm hot combing my hair and y'all, I had to do this like every other day so I know I got some heat damage but lucky for me, I know how to take care of my hair so I know how to get my curls back. Stay tuned for all the natural hair videos because y'all know it's coming. It's been two years since my big chop and my hair has been growing real well. So I'm excited to share with you my hair maintenance. So now that I like took care of my leave out and the front of my hair, now I'm going to get into curling my hair. Um, originally, I wanted to do big, nice wand curls, but this hair cannot hold a curl. So I had to find a wand curler that was way smaller. Eventually, I'm gonna invest in a pencil curler, that like really, really skinny wand curler, cause I feel like those curls would really look good on this type of hair and it would last longer. With these curls, this was the smallest barrel that I had and it worked well for me. I just like had to do it every day because it wouldn't hold until the next day. And I feel like if I had a smaller barrel with tighter curls, it will be able to last through the night and all of that. But yeah, I love how these curls come out. They're super pretty and they still get wand curls, even though I don't think this is a wand curl. I don't even know what this is, y'all. I found this um, hot tool under my sink and it was my mom's from like five years ago. So the name like rubbed off too, so I have no idea what it is. But yeah, now I'm just going through and curling my hair. This takes me like 40 minutes to do every day. But I love the look. But it's just so high maintenance. But it's cute as fuck. So, you know, I don't want to be a baddie. So I already know what it takes. And I don't mind. I just wake up earlier and prepare myself and give myself more time to do my hair.
This is how my hair is looking. I love the curls. I just love everything about this. It gets very classy, which is what I was going for. A lot of people think this is my real hair and I love that for me. I will definitely be doing this again. Not sure when, but I definitely will. I might do it with tapins though because I love this hair. Like, I love the texture. It surpasses my own. So I really want to be able to do more styles with it. Like maybe I'll do a versatile sew-in so I could have a middle part and a side part. And then maybe I could do like ponytails and half ups, half down, stuff like that. But I'm gonna wait till my hair gets a little longer just so it's easier to blend in. Because my leave out, my hair is pretty long, but the way that I cut layers into this, it kind of like messed up the shape of my hair. So I've learned a lot from this experience, which is why I wanted to come back a couple weeks later and give you guys a real in-depth review. Even though this is not sponsored, so like I don't really have to give you guys a review, I'm just letting you guys know if you decide to try this style and this type of hair texture. Side, 